Oh, uh, you know what? It's a long time coming. I mean, I, I, I found this story to be so inspiring and heartwarming um, that I knew audiences would love it. It was a long, a long uh, hard road to get it to the screen. But to see it in this particular theater where I've seen so many movies with my wife and my kids, I mean, this is like a four day, five day a week uh, thing for us. So it's a, it's a lot, it's a lot. But um, you know, to see the reaction from the audience was just amazing. As an aspiring athlete, um, you know, as a dad, as a guy who's an, an animal lover, you know, as a guy who's always wanted to and kind of model his life as an athlete my entire career, uh, many things. I, the complicated idea of a guy who was so close to finally achieving his goal and being a pretty, you got to be pretty selfish to do what he does. And then to do something so selfless and really kind of give up everything that he dreamed of his entire career just to save Arthur, it was pretty special. Phenomenal. We all knew that we were playing second fiddle to you, Kai. He's, uh, he's a star, but to see what, what kind of emotional connection we had in all of those moments. I mean, we had, she has an, is an amazing trainer who could like really get him to do all of these different things, but to connect on an intimate level emotionally the way that we did uh, when the real race starts for me, which is getting him to safety, getting him the help that he needs, um, you know, the medical attention, that was that was a different thing. And you know, you can either do that or you can't. You can't fake that sort of stuff. Uh, well, hopefully, yes. Hopefully we'll encourage lots of people to go out, adopt dogs, you know, um, bring more pets into their home. But I think coming to the theater and sharing such an inspiring story with each other from people from all walks of life, again, you know, I, I miss that. I did that, you know, for such a long time. And to be able to kind of hopefully add to that experience again and enhance that, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Really, it's, it's, it's a special day for me. I got a little emotional. We brought them to our press event and uh, my dogs are so uh, out of control, except the one who's mostly out of control all the time, she was the best behaved and really made a connection with you guys. I feel like it's one of those movies that based on the name, you don't know a lot about what it is, but I've seen it a few times now and just watching it in the theater with the crowd of, you know, just like a full house. It was such an incredible feeling. I mean, you know, moments where there's not a dry eye in the audience and everyone is just absolutely completely quiet you know compelled by what's happening on the screen and I think it's it's one of those movies you know it, it's it's an incredible film it's exciting but it's also you know it's it's about it's about hope and and, and friendship and maybe the, the greatest friendship of all between man and dog and um, I'm, I'm yeah I'm very excited for people to see it. Uh, I adopted Chopa from the movie she was uh, she was one of the extras on set so she was provided by a shelter out of Santo Domingo called Albergesos, and um, and of course, you know, when you show up to work and there's dogs on set, you just kind of like you just kind of go crazy. And um, it was it was just the best. I mean, we I basically spent all day with her, and then I begged the shelter to let me foster her for a little bit. And then within maybe like two hours of her, you know, showing up at my hotel, I was like, I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna be apart from her, and we haven't been apart ever since, so. Yeah, well, Leo, I think, starts the movie off as someone who um, is looking out for himself. You know, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a travel and, like, extreme sports influencer, and so a lot of, you know, it, it, a, a lot of that life is, like, finding the sponsorships, making the content, it's all me, 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 and so, and so he's kind of learned to be selfish by, by design. And especially because he was Michael's teammate, you know, three years ago and things didn't turn out that well. So he's kind of learned from all that. Like, I can't rely on anybody else. I'm just gonna do my own thing. And, uh, you know, Michael approaches him three years later and is like, hey, I need you. We gotta race again. And he very reluctantly is like, all right, I don't know if I trust this guy, but I'm getting back into it. And I think over the course of the movie, you know, in the same way that Arthur really affects Michael, I think, I think Leo's touched by that too and, and and also just you know being being in that kind of team environment I mean I grew up like I was an athlete in, in, in high school and um, it is something really special to be a part of a team and to be working together towards a shared goal and uh, you know I, I hope that our movie captured that and, and those two elements of, of you know just just coming together teamwork and also a friendship yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, when I read the script and I and I learned what adventure racing was, I was like, oh, this is incredible that people actually do this. It's like a you know hundreds of mile trek and bike and hike and canoe and kayak, you know, through through everything and some of the craziest, most treacherous conditions you can imagine. 
Um, yeah, it, it was pretty pretty great for us actors to be able to do that between action and cut. But there were some grueling moments for sure, some ni long nights in swamps with rain pouring down on us. I mean, you see it in the movie. There's no way to fake that. We're dead. We're it's really us out there, and it's us on the bikes, and it's us on the kayaks, and um, you know, I think it's really incredible to be able to to be able to do that. We also had you know Mr. Michael Lidnord himself. Uh, uh, as a consultant training us so we, we did three weeks with Michael and, uh, and and basically learned what it was like to be an adventure racer which is just crazy there's got to be a part of you that's just a little insane uh, to be able to to, to want to sign up for a sport like that because it truly is it, it's insane couldn't be more excited we already feel the electric energy and we're just so happy to bring this experience globally worldwide well, from the beginning, I saw this story that was a short documentary, and I just leaned in without sound, without anything. It was something that I gravitated towards, and I knew that the world needed to see it and feel the hope that you feel every journey, every through every journey and beat of the way. Absolutely. I mean, we filmed in the heart of the pandemic, so it was definitely not an easy process in all of the ways in an extremely physical, mental, and emotional journey that all of the cast, including you, Kai, endured with, while we were filming, but everyone just gave it their all, and that's really what makes dream work and teamwork work. So. Right from the first time Dorothy and I heard it, it just felt so affirmational. And also, I like the contrast of someone who's so selfish and has his own last shot connecting with someone else who's totally alone and the magic happens. So for me, that was the quest and I feel like it was accomplished by the filmmakers. It all made sense. We're working with almost all of them again because it was a very bonded group. And Mark, I think, established once again why he's amazing because no one's seen him do a role like this before. So very exciting and very, um, he and the dog had this really great connection, which was, you could see on the screen, the truth come out. So very satisfying. And now we want to have a big hit, Lionsgate. Let's do it. It feels like it's been a long time coming. I know it's been long for Michael. He and I met and sat down 2017 in New York, and he told me his story. And when you hear a few of those key details, the racers showing up at the end of the airport to help get him on the airplane. Every little bit of it along the way, I thought, there's a movie, there's a movie, there's a movie. And it really kind of all fell together in the screenwriting. Well, it's, it, it's really challenging because it's his story, it's real, people know it, and you want to you wanna be faithful to it, but in the same time, you know, you are trying to get what could be a 10-hour movie or a mini-series or a streaming series into movie length. So I had to make some tough choices about what could stay, what you know had to go, and ultimately it was the spirit of what Michael went through, what Arthur went through, what the team went through, sticking to that, figuring out how to tell that story. I think Mark was born to play Michael, and there was a moment in pre-production in the Dominican when I was there when Michael and Mark met for the first time. And within five minutes, they were in an ocean kayak, and I happened to be swimming in the waves, and they kayaked past me. And I just, I yelled at them, we've been waiting three years for this, just to see these two guys together. Because Mark totally grabs the spirit of Michael, and he kind of lives it, and the way he looks at Arthur and gets down on the ground with him. Mark had two thoughts when we started shooting. I want to sleep on the street with Arthur, and I want to say goodbye to him in the airport, and I want to get down on the floor with him. And those are the two scenes that kill me every time. Yeah. The, thing I, the thing that I set out to do when I heard this story was let's not make a dog movie. Let's make a sports movie. Let's make a movie that anybody can go see. Two guys can go because it's a cool sports movie. I mean, the, I found it on ESPN. Um, and, and let's have a sports movie with a dog in it. And I thought that that was a different approach than a Disney kind of movie with a digital dog, you know, that smiles and laughs. And Yukai is amazing. And you feel in the theater every time they cut to his close up, you just kind of feel it all kind of rise up. So I think a sports movie with a dog is kind of the, what I wanted to do. And I think that we got that. The story with Arthur, we touched so many souls and hearts and so I, I don't you know I, I think the, the important with this movie is that 
Or, 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 Arthur is not the only Arthur out there. And I think now people understand that the dog that you choose to pass every day to school or work, maybe that's your new Arthur. And I think that's the thing I'm most proud of. Yeah, it actually changed everything. Uh, I was a sportsman, I was an elite athlete. I was training four or five hours every day. Uh, that was the thing, I was gaining, I was reaching to be the best in the world, that's the thing. And, and now with, with art, it changed my path. And I'm really proud of that because I, I dare to turn right instead of continue pushing back. So yeah, so it's, um, it's uh, and also like for my family, like we, we, we come together, we were like three, three persons. And then it became five with Arthur and Thor, like, so, so it's been, um, and, and now for the kids to see the movie for the first time, you know, if, and, and the thing is like, you kind of play Arthur are so close to the real Arthur. So it's like, it's, it's, it's like seeing your life once again. Mark Bowie is one of the best in this business. He's not only the best actor in my point of view, he's more like, He's so professional, you know, he does all his business and everything around the thing he do as an actor. And, and when he when he gets attached to the movie, he never let go. Because this is not easy to do a movie. It's a roller coaster, it's, it's up and down and up and down. So it's like, with, with, uh, I, I salute him. And it's a great honor that he portrayed me for sure. The first thing you will do, is kiss your family or the important persons in your life. And and if, if you want to have a movie that touch your heart, you see Arthur the King. Wow, it's, it's really, you can hear the dogs excited as well. It's really exciting because I think it is, it is emotional and it's a true story. I mean, we didn't really make it up. Um, and we had the writer and the participant of the original story with us throughout the whole time. I think he's really, Mikael, I think he's very pleased with the film. Um, and as you say, it's emotional. I, I, I don't want people to sort of find it too easy to watch. I don't want them to know the end, what happens to the dog, we'll see, go and see the movie. It dealt with a character um, played by Mark Wahlberg who was kind of, he certainly wasn't, you know, he was a good guy, but he was obsessive. He was angry with himself. He felt like he was a failure. And you know, like all, oh, true sports you're not racing other people you're racing yourself and I think um, I think that's what Mark Wahlberg was very good at and I think that's what the story was great about and then basically there's this race it's all about the race and then suddenly it becomes about a relationship with a with animal well we were, we got lucky with our cast yeah um, and I think they were you know it was very demanding on them they had to be athletic they had to run you know you can't fake that kind of stuff and uh, you know, Mark famously keeps himself in pretty good shape, so I think all the other actors are going, oh my God, how are we going to do here? But, you know, they, they work really hard and, you know, they put a lot of a lot of physical effort into it. You know, I, well, that was very interesting because we, we planned this, the zip line scene and then I suddenly got there on the first day and I went, my God, is, is Mark going to do this? Because I hadn't really discussed it with him. Um, and he's going to say, oh no, you can fake it in front of blue screen or whatever. But he got a, he hitched himself in and he flew himself out there and he hung, hung there for like 40 minutes. So I'm really grateful to him for being game. He was a sweetheart. He was a professional in the end, but it took him a while to get, to get there. You know, the, the first he was going, wait a minute, why, why am I doing this? What's in it for me? But then by the end, he was a professional. You know, there's all those values about family and friendship and stuff like that. But what I think, what I think uh, I want them to take away is it's it's great it's okay to compete it's okay to try to win but there are so many different ways to win first of all these, these alpha male guys racers putting everything on the line and then saying no never mind that we're gonna save this dog it's such a selfless story and you know I love the fact that like you can be living your life and going down this path and then out of nowhere something comes along and changes the entire direction of your life and that's what happened to michael Lenord. and you know it's and, and then mark you know 
nothing to say there. He's un unbelievable and perfect for it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was great. We all lived on the beach in the Dominican Republic. Um, so we all got to bond and surf and have a good time during COVID with masks on. Uh, a little weird to surf with a mask on. But, um, yeah, it was great. You know, Mark and I did the fighter together. So I've known him for a long time. And when I sent him the script, he said, I'm in. And he stick, stuck with us for like six years while we were trying to get the money together and get the movie going. So he's incredible. And Simu, I mean, he's un unbelievable. We cast him after he had finished Shang-Chi, but it hadn't come out yet. That came out and now he's Ken and, you know, the rest is history. Um, I should call our, our stunt coordinator, Sean Graham, kept everybody safe. The, the stuff that we were doing was insane though. The zip line is real. It's 100% real. They were on the zip line. I would never get on that. We were shooting in, you know, high on mountains and rivers and forests. And so it was hard just getting the equipment in and out because we're trucking in generators and trailers and camera equipment and, you know, craft services and catering into like up that mountain, up to the top. And you're like, what? Yeah, but it was it was not easy. I hope they I hope they leave feeling that animals are as important as people, and and that you know that connection is is not only real but to be valued at the same level as you know a human connection, and that we should treat animals differently if we can, and help them. That's what I hope.